Okay, so Sightmaster Elevation 2013. Before we start, one of the things we have to do is just reset the uh, default units in the software. So rather than going into the um, assistant for now, we'll close the assistant down and basically go into Tools, Settings, and change the unit of length to be millimeters and change the rounding to the nearest thousands. This gives us the highest accuracy for doing splines etc. And we'll also change the units in the units of length for the um, reports also to be millimeters and a thousandth. Apply those changes and click OK. Now any time as you can see here we can restart the um, assistant just by going up to the start in the top left hand side so we can return back to the assistant just by clicking this button here and basically what I've done here is I've loaded in the old image from the older software just for familiarity with existing customers. Um, so basically just load the image of the church and click open and what we're going to look at here is the new procedure for actually doing the uh, lens correction, the calibration etc. Um, the area we're going to look at is this area here for the calibration but before we do that we have to go and do the lens correction. Now to do this we go to the next photo option up here, it's basically the next operation on the photo. Um, so we go next photo and this is where the new software differs from the old one. We don't have we don't get to pick the two points anymore and then a third point in the center. What we actually have to do is click the lens correction start and more or less put a construction line on across from the corner to the opposite corner that where we want to deal with. So all I'm going to do here is use this construction line command. Um, I'll just use the wheel mouse to roll in so I can get a lot closer. This is this is the idea with the software to get as close and as accurate as you possibly can. So I'm going to put one construction point here where the corner of the building and the underside of the eaves meets and then I'm going to scoot across to the opposite side because this theoretically is a straight line to this opposite corner here. Okay. So that's a construction line. If we go back to the centre area, just to this place where the, uh, just behind the drain pipe here, you can see that there's, the lens distortion has put this slightly up. Now what you need to make sure you're doing here is these increments, make sure you go down to the one increment, that's the most accurate, um, and then basically just move the slider up until the image is lined up, as you can see now, it's lined up to the underside of the eaves. So that now should follow the underside of the eaves all the way across to the opposite side of the building. And that's how they do the lens correction now. So if I zoom extents on that, and as you can see it's distorted the outside of the image. Um, to apply this um, we basically just have to go to the next option and then it'll do the calculation instantly. Now this now is into the um, calibration plane phase of the um, setup and basically all we have to do now is manipulate this grid onto the area that we've measured previously. In this case it was this left hand panel of the building and we've got I've got a dimension across here of 6850 and a dimension up here of 6950. Now the newer version is much more user friendly because you can actually pick any of these corners and move them independently. Um, as you can see you can literally just get them roughly in the right place just by left clicking and then repositioning. Now obviously for accuracy you need to get these in the image as close as you can to the exact pos position that you've actually measured. So if I just click this button again Oops, on, and move it. So I'm actually clicking and holding the left mouse button down there to, to manipulate the actual dot and I'm going to place it right in this corner here and this is on the flat surface that we've measured across so that's one corner and as you can see when you click the image 
the little circle it turns pink to indicate that you're actually manipulating that one and as I mentioned earlier just left click and hold to move the actual circle around and position it exactly where you need it so if we do all four all at once um, the input of the dimension comes in a second once we've done all four positions as you can see I'm staying as zoomed in as possible so we go from here to here okay and then we basically go as you can see up here at the top right here we've completed three phases we've got another two phases to go so the next phase is to actually import the dimensions themselves now these are now locked so to input two dimensions you can go to this icon or to import one dimension you can uh, go to this icon what here obviously we want to do too and again they've improved the software so that you can now just click the icon and actually pick the two positions and it's got automated snaps in the software as well as you can see as I go near each corner there's, there is actually a small circle still on each of these corners and all we're going to do here to apply the the dimension is left click one corner and left click the other corner and then type in in millimeters because we've just set the dimensions to be millimeters the actual horizontal axis distance which we measured on site at 6850 and apply it just by clicking the OK and then the vertical distance is from here up to here and that was 6950 6950 okay so we OK that and that now locks in the calibration plane and we're now in a mode where we can start to actually draw we're not quite because we have to basically once we're happy with that we can make changes if we want to but if we go to complete now we get the drawing tools to actually draw directly onto the uh, picture itself ready for export to the CAD files and again once you're into this mode make sure you tend to zoom in as much as you can uh, the more in accurate you are the, the bigger the image sorry the, the more accurate you are so literally just to give you an example of the boxes as you can see it's now locked to the actual perspective of the image so you could literally just zoom into each individual corner pull out the re relevant rectangles uh, there are a couple of newer tools that's in the software here we have a parallel polygon tool which is very useful because in the case of what we might have here there might be some lead flashing running around the inside that's actually parallel to this main structure here so if we click this we can actually draw around the shape that we want to run parallel to and back to the top and then literally just pull the image in and we're drawing simultaneously four correct lines okay other things like arches if we just zoom into the arch up at the top it's exactly the same as it used to be in the old software you basically pick two points on the horizontal and then the rise of the arch so in this case I want to draw the arch from where the arch starts to rise across and you can notice that the ortho which is here is locked on that's that's causing the cursor to follow the perspective of the image so it helps me in the fact that you can literally just pick two points on the vertical and then draw the arch okay so for the rectangular shape at the base we can now use the corner points of the points we've put in already so I've got one there and again I would need to zoom back in down to the base here to pick the corner of the window opening which is there okay so basically you keep using these small tools that's up here um, and trace over the facade until you've got all the detail that you need and then you go to the start CAD export and basically if you you've got a perspective option will take the image out in perspective or a rectified option which will correct the perspective and basically put it into a CAD mode um, and then basically just click save as file you have the option of DXF so we can save this as 
church 2 in this case and click save and as you can see it gives you a report as it exports it, how many lines etc were exported click OK and that's now ready to be opened as a DXF file in an ECAD package